the presenters are Francesco Petrini and Stani Raspopovic. Hello to everybody. So uh, imagine being in the most magic night of your life with your future beloved wife, and um, you're about to propose her this magic thing, and in that moment, you're grasping the glass of wine on your side, watching her directly into her eyes, and this is what happens if you are an upper limb amputee. Upper limb amputees are unable to feel anything from the prosthesis and therefore to control the force or to understand the shape or hardness of object they are manipulating. On the other side, lower limb amputees are uh, not able to understand the sensation for their prosthetic leg, and therefore they are, while walking, having a balance problem, overcharging their residual healthy leg, and therefore on the long term they have a big problems with the bones and articulation of the residual. Finally, in both of these categories, vast majority of amputees are feeling a severe phantom limb pain, a very big problem that doesn't make them dream during the night and there is no present successful medical, uh, drug treatment for that. We propose Sensi, the unique worldwide solution for all of these problems. It is comprised from an artificial skin together with implantable neurostimulator and tiny as a hair uh, electrodes to be implanted within the residual neural structure. By means of that, we are able to reestablish the normal sensory feedback in these persons. Uh, we are Sensars Neuroprosthetics, and we are having over the decade of the experience in development of microelectrodes, testing of these in animals and in clinical studies, and very important, we are the unique worldwide who are able to know how to transfer the information from the sensorized skin until the neural structure of amputees or nerve damaged. Finally, this technology is protected with a patent application. And the working principle of Sensi is very easy. The tactile information from the sensorized skin are used for stimulating the peripheral nerves. Then, the nature does the rest. The signals are conveyed from the nerves to the brain. And when the signals are there, the amputee is actually able to perceive the interaction with the external world. And here you can see how easy it is to implant Sensi. But this is not science fiction. This is true. We've tested that. We made clinical trials with an amputee. And here, we make you meet Dennis. And here, you have his testimonial. It was quite amazing, because uh, suddenly I could feel something that I haven't been uh, feeling for, for nine years. My kids, they, they, they thought it was, was cool. They even called me the cable guy. You can feel round things and hard things and soft things. And the feedback was totally new to me. And, and suddenly, soft. when I was doing some movements, uh, I could uh, feel actually what I was doing uh, instead of looking what I was doing. I would love to have it, uh, the new prosthesis because it, it's so amazing to, to feel something that you haven't been able to feel for, for so many years. And Dennis is not alone. There are five millions of amputees, only in Europe and USA. We envision that for the success of our business, we need third-party reimbursement. And this is why uh, we think it will be more easy to get it by addressing lower limb amputees market. We've estimated that with an established company, we can get a revenue every year addressing that market of up to 800 millions. But how can we get the smile of this guy, most importantly, the bag he has in his hand. We have very aggressive but realistic timeline. We've already achieved the development, as Stani was saying, of the electrodes. We've already tested them with extensive experiments with animals, with a human clinical trial. Now we need to develop the artificial skin and the implantable stimulator. We're taking into account clinical trials for the certification of the device for going to sales with the help of experienced marketing people um, and regulatory path people. However, we believe it is more realistic <clears throat> to get the money, eight, 10 millions, for the development of the device, 
testing of the device with few clinical trials, and then an exiting strategy to a big company in neuromodulation, such as Medtronic, St. Jude, Boston Scientific Hospital. In conclusion, we need five years to make our dream, the dream of Dennis and of all the other amputees, to become reality. Stanislav Popovic. Francesco Pedrini, thank you very much. Thank you. Please, questions. <laughs> you all through. All together. Okay. Um, so it seems to be a, a pretty sophisticated technology. Uh, what is now your strategy? Let's say we are on a daily basis in terms of clinical settings. How are you going to organize uh, the technology, the team, to fine-tune that? Because depending on the patients, the nerve impairment is different, the sensations are different. What is the plan for that? So uh, it's an excellent question. So yes, every amputation and every nerve damage is different. That's completely true. But there are some common pathways for all of them. And uh, just from there are several aspects to reply. But briefly, uh, from the surgical viewpoint, we are using the, set, uh, the part of the nerve which is completely functional and uh, co yet conductive. Uh, on the software part, we developed an uh, efficient mapping structure because since these tiny electrodes are having several active sites that can stimulate, like in deep brain stimulation in reality is the case, um, we are having this optimized function which is used for several first weeks. It's called assessment or mapping period in which we are extensively stimulating the amputee, getting his answers to the dedicated uh, graphical user interface, and then after approximately three to four weeks, we are having uh, what we call the established map. So whenever I stimulate the active site number one, he's feeling the first finger, third uh, finger, etc. And then in that moment, we have something which is uh, fixed both by surgery and fibrosis within the body. And on the other side, it is also fixed from the software and uh, electrical viewpoint. Then it can be connected to, the conne uh, to our external controller and uh, be used continuously even, even in, ho in home use, even though we will test it. Finally. During the, uh, we are also envisioning that there is the possibility that after the years, something could change. It would be very easy system because we are mitigating also that. So he can return to hospital and in half an hour procedure, we do remapping and we can save it. solid. So just to finish on that, are you planning then for, for your proof of concept in clinical trials to pre-select the patients? I think it could be a path. Yeah, of course, of course. We are having in our clinical trial, so we already did some clinical trials. Presently, we are uh, finishing the ethical submission in three countries that are having the uh, vast pressure of amputees, like Israel, Serbia, and Italy. Uh, in, in Switzerland, there are not so many amputees. <laughs> and we are, and we are um, of course, in first stage, addressing the guys having the, the, the more distal possible transradial amputation. In the second stage, we are going to transhumeral and we hope uh, the leg amputations. What's been the response, again, along these lines, uh, the response of neurosurgeon, but also um, uh, thinking of the other therapies that would be doing the follow-on, you know, again, in terms of procedure time and, and you know, complexity? That, that was our main concern, but uh, just a very quick, whenever we spoke to the neurosurgeon or experienced orthopedics, because we, we've been addressing these guys, they said, I oh, you want to implant this? This is very easy. And in reality, they, they, they gave estimation also about the timing, but overall experienced opinion, both from a head of department in Belgrade, to, uh, from head of the department in Catholic University of Rome and the Israeli guys, was that, that, uh, that they believe that we will really make a minimally invasive surgery with even just the peripheral block as for the arm. And we believe it will be similar for the hand, for the leg. And so as invasiveness, they are very confident. As uh, the type of technology, they believe that these implants uh, already at this stage are tiny enough to be implanted. So, of course, the last part, which we didn't address, is the neuro, neuro stimulator of full implantation. And we are now presently working on how to make the pocket within the, the tissue, for instance, for the upper limb, because the, the, there is a lot of movement. But we have two uh, options, and we believe that at least one of two options would be working. One last short question. My question is actually on the robotic hand because this, this is not your product, right? The, you're working mostly on the sensing. And so is there any early signs that you're going to partner with uh, some of these companies that are developing the robotic hand? So that's an excellent question. And uh, we do have with a couple of them. One of them is a very established company, but I don't think that we can say okay. the name. Good. And in the lower limbs? 
Excellent question. We are presently targeting many companies. That there are many companies working lower limb, and we are presently doing so. So for us, both we don't care if it is upper or lower limb. Our technology is pretty much the same for both. Francesco Stani, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.